still pinching myself that we would have the skipper of the Cats, Joel Salwood, on uh, Brownie again. It's a good get from one legend to another, though. Yeah, I know. And haven't things just kicked off? Uh, Jimmy Smith, maybe not have been known to too many people south of the border, but I tell you what, <laughs> since making an appearance on Tools Down, and we will take full credit for it, this man has not only continued to climb the media ladder, but Jimmy, am I right as we welcome you? SEN Talk Sport Radio in the Harbour City has you as the drive host as a result of your appearances on this show. Jimmy, well done and thanks for the gifts. <laughs> hey, Huey Brownie, how are you, boys? By the way, you're going from Joel Selwood to me. Uh, wow, <laughs> what a leap of faith that is. Um, no truth to that rumour, Huey. Um, although I, I did make contact with Hutchie and said, uh, you've offered me this shift, you know, what was it about it? And he said, tools down, mate, tools down. <laughs> Beautiful. We're still happening. So, it's the start um, of many careers, mate. By the, by the way, but where have you boys been up yeah. to? Haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, no, nah, we haven't been doing too much. I haven't been able to leave the house down here in Victoria, so we're going beautifully. But what I have been doing is been watching plenty of NRL and the Melbourne Storm. I'm confused, Jimmy. You need to tell me this. Penrith, they've won 17 games in a row. Clearly the best side in the comp. How do they go into Sunday night's game as underdogs? Yeah, well, Brandy, I reckon you understand experience too, right? So this is the incredible thing about the Melbourne Storm. They're playing in the 18th season under the coaching of Craig Bellamy, and they are just about to play in their ninth grand final in that time. So I know Alistair Clarkson mm. is a superstar coach of the AFL. To have a strike rate of every second year, your team make the grand final. It's it's like if you follow your NFL, it's Bill Belichick guy yeah. um, with the New England Patriots. So um, all credit to Craig Bellamy. Um, they've got a little bloke who plays number nine named Cameron Smith, who is clearly the greatest player of his era. And he might put the icing on the cake with a man of the match performance in what might be his last game in the NRL. The, the great thing about um, Bellamy, I suppose, is the fact that he's always had to do it with different players. With Cooper Cronk leaves and Greg Ingus leaves, and you know, like every second year, the stars get poached, as what happens in successful clubs. And instead, new guys like Pappenhausen and um, Big Nelson Asafa Solomon, and these type of guys who just play their role beautifully. Yeah, it's unbelievable how, and this is what the players who play under Bellamy say. He really simplifies what their role is. All I want you to do is this, this, and this, right? Don't worry about anything else. And invariably, if they do that, with that sprinkling of superstars that he's got, they have a very successful season. He's played in the last six prelims, the Melbourne Storm, the last six prelims. So, yeah, it is incredible. But you, Ryan Pappenhausen's a really interesting one, Brownie, because you look at... He was stuck behind James Tedesco, who is arguably the best number one in the game. Some people think he's the best player in the game at the moment at the West Tigers. So he went, right, I'm going to go for an opportunity down at the Melbourne Storm. They identified him, said, yeah, he's got the talent. He's got the characteristics that we like. When he when he got there behind Billy Slater, he was fourth in line to be the fullback. And circumstances, injuries, opportunities have come about. At the end of this game on Sunday, whether they win or lose, he will probably be named in Brad Fittler's 27-man New South Wales State of Origin squad. That's what you call a meteoric rise. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, they're a very good side, Penrith, as I touched on. Um, but the, the one standout is Nathan Cleary. How do you go about quelling his influence? Yeah, it's um, it, it's funny. I'm, I'm trying to think of, give me the AFL equivalent of a guy who is always composed, invariably takes the right option, doesn't necessarily have to be the most brilliant player, but is highly effective at making those around him look good. Would have been Cam, whoever, would have been, yeah, but would have been Campbell Brown back in, <laughs> back in, back in, back in He's the equivalent of Dusty, though, for this side, isn't he? If he plays well, they win. That's right. And, and if he plays well, then invariably Jerome Luai will play well. Appy Corusau has probably played well. Dylan Edwards, the fullback, he's probably played well. Viliami Kikau mm. out on the left-hand side. It, I'm not saying it, it, it's vital that he has a blinder for them to win, but it's invariable that it goes hand in hand, right? He plays really well and the Penrith Panthers win. And as you say, Brownie, like 17 straight wins. They've never done it in their mm. history. And then they go into the ga uh, game as an underdog, albeit a minor underdog. Yep. Yeah, and I'm, I'm tipping from the way you're talking about that. You fancy Penrith over the storm, Jimmy? Uh, bad route again, Hugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <well. laughs> Missed it by that much. <laughs> now, I, I, on, on the score of experience... Um, on the score of, I think this 
is definitely Cameron Smith's last game in the Melbourne Storm colours. Could potentially be his last game at all in what is an amazing career with all that support cast around him that are playing really good footy. Bellamy's experience as well. I think the Melbourne Storm get home in what I hope is a classic. I'll tell you one thing that uh, Huey did get right. He told me the winner of the Dalian medal before it was announced. <laughs> yeah, <I did. laughs> what happened there? That was an absolute debacle. Oh. I feel sorry for the poor bloke at the Daily Telegraph at New Zealand. Oh. You had one job, just to upload it, but just wait till the ceremony's done, right? So, um, on the back of that, uh, it, it was it was so awkward watching. You know, there were people were contacting me on social media and saying, "Oh, have a look at this." And um, to me, it made it even more intriguing because he was a surprise winner, Jack White. Like if yeah. it said Nathan Cleary won, you'd go, "Oh, well, that's yep. pretty mundane." But Jack White won it. You went, "Okay, well, how does this play out?" Right. Um, and there's, there's a lot of speculation around because everything was made public. Yeah. Who voted in what games and who got points and who did that voting. And so Clint Gutherson, the Parramatta Reels fullback, he didn't get any points in the last game where a couple of try assists, a try saving tackle. You think, oh, how did he miss out? So uh, plenty of controversy. But it, look, it's not for the best player in the competition. You know, you could probably say that Lockie Neal was the best player in the competition yeah. and he won the Brownlow by a street, but it's for the best player in the games that his team plays in. And you might get three points one week and have a shocker the next week. Well, you're still on the same amount as the player who's played consistently and got a two and a one. So that's the system. Maybe the system needs an overhaul. Yeah. Now, we know you're going to be biased. You've got your radio show, your gold microphone, or maybe it's bronze. I'm not sure the colour you and your massive team up there are going for to decorate the studio. Uh, you can't all be NRL, though. We've got to get a tip from the AFL. Do you know who's playing this weekend and who, do, who wins it? I think four to certainty. There you go, right? Up. No, no, mate. Boys, I love my AFL. I'll be I know you do, mate. I was being, I was being silly. Um, I'm a great admirer of Dusty, um, but I think I'm a, I'm a bigger admirer of Paddy Dangerfield. So, yep. I, I'm, I'm, and from a distant connection between the Country Women's Association, my mum knows the grandmother of Tommy Hawkins. So he's a career that I've always sort of followed. Um, glad to hear that he's fit, firing, ready to go. So I'm going to go for the Cats. Mate, you're going to fit right in with Sydney Radio up there. You're already dropping some names and mentioning who you know <laughs> and who knows you. Uh, Jimmy, congrats. We know you had your first show today. The very best of luck, yeah, mate. We mean it. And uh, fingers crossed we'll keep rolling on down here and we'll provide you and get too much superstar <laughs> styling. Uh, we'll get you on again sometime soon for Tools Down where it all started for you. <laughs> oh, mate, I'd love that, Huey. Uh, thanks, Brownie. Uh, just a minute, got the... Uh... Prime Minister calling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course you do, mate. Off he goes. SEM Sydney's finest. Uh, tune in uh, no matter where you are in Australia. If you love Jimmy, and why wouldn't you tune in on SEN up in Sydney? Uh, got a great product going up there, and it's a big credit to Hutchie and all the team for driving sport in the Harbour City. We need more of it.